welcome back to Team 6K. This is Undead bringing you an advanced guide on Salaman Greats. So we, we're if you've been playing this deck for any amount of time recently, you'll know that this deck is good. If you've been playing TCG or OCG or Master Duel, you'll also know that this deck is pretty good. Um, it's currently tier 3 in Duel Links. Um, but, you know, as I and many other people are aware, this deck is a little bit more of a skill-heavy deck to play. A lot of the time, you are given too many options in this deck, and because of the amount of options you're given, you can often be given such a great amount of advantage. But at the same time, on the flip side though, all of those options that they give you when playing this deck can also be a downside if you don't know what you're doing. You might actually screw yourself out of a win if you don't know exactly what to do at any given moment. This video aims to teach anybody from pro to noob how to play this deck properly, even if they never played it before. So the Sound Man Great Archetype is a bunch of low-level fire cybers monsters uh, that pretty much generally speaking uh, gain benefits based on being in the graveyard. Jack Jaguar has the graveyard effect that if it's in the graveyard and you control a Salamangrate Great Link monster, then you get to shuffle another Salamangrate Great from your grave into the deck to special summon itself to a zone that that Link monster points to. Just keep in mind that it has to be a Salamangrate Great Link monster uh, that it points to, uh, because if you have a unicorn or something similar, you won't be able to summon the Sunlight Wolf to the zone that the Unicorn points to. Salaman Great Foxy, this one's grave effect is that if it is in your graveyard and there is a face up back row on the field, so a spell or a trap, you can discard a Salaman Great card, that being monster, spell, or trap, you can discard a Salaman Great card to special summon it, and if you do, you are allowed to uh, destroy non-target one face-up spell or trap card on the field. Balco's graveyard effect, if it is in the graveyard, you can return one of your Salamangre monsters to the hand in order to special summon itself. That might be useful because of it being a level 4, it might make it a lot easier to make a rank 4. It also might be good for recovery plays if you want to be able to use your gazelle a second time. Foul, Mir, and Gazelle all don't actually have graveyard effects, but that's okay, they have really awesome hand effects. Battle's hand effect is that if a Salamain Great Monster is normal special summoned, except for another copy of itself, you can special summon this card from your hand. Fantastic Extender, any archetype would want one of these, right? The effect in hand is that you can discard another Salamain Great card to special summon itself. I saved the best for last, this is Salaman Great Gazelle, this is the one that is limited to one for a good reason. If a Salaman Great Monster is sent to your graveyard by any means at all, you can special summon it from your hand. And if it's normal or special summoned, you get to send any Salaman Great card from the deck to the graveyard. Card being monster spell or trap. You might notice by now there's a little bit of a theme here, they all like the graveyard, right? Gazelle sends something to the graveyard. Jack Jaguar can summon itself from Graveyard. Foxy can special summon itself from Graveyard. Falco can special summon itself from Graveyard. Fowl's a bit different. It doesn't have anything in the Graveyard. And Mir's a bit different. It doesn't do anything in the Graveyard. But its effect to special summon itself from the hand will discard a card, helping to fuel your Graveyard. And I should mention that Fowl also has the bonus effect of if it's on the field, you can discard a Salaman Great card to target one of your opponent's spell traps and prevent that card from being activated this turn. It's definitely a very good graveyard focused deck. So before I move any further, I just want to mention that if your opponent is a Salamangrate player, then you would like to summon Abyss Dweller against them to prevent them from activating those very nice graveyard effects. The way that you can tell your opponent is a Salaman Great player is that they are playing either Soul Burner or any of the many characters that have the skill ties that bind. Generally speaking, we're going to be Link Summoning for the majority of the time in this deck. We have a Link 1 monster, Salaman Great Bailings, that can be summoned using any level 4 or lower Cybers monster, so you could use your Lady Debug. Then when it's Link Summoned, you can search for a Mangrate Sanctuary directly from your deck to your hand. Because it's incredibly easy to go into this Link monster, we can very easily just play one copy of the Salaman Great Sanctuary, because we are not trying to draw it in our hand. We will always have it with a bailing, so we don't need to play more than one of it. Additionally, this one has a grave effect that if our Salaman Great card or cards would be destroyed by battle or card effect, we can once per turn banish it from the graveyard to prevent that destruction. Of course, first of all, we're going to go into this. It's a link one. We will use any of our monsters to go into this, search for our field spell, and play it. Salaman Great Sunlight Wolf. 
It requires two fire effect monsters, so you cannot use your Lady Debug. If a monster is normal or special summon to the zone that this card points to, and remember it points up and it points down, so if your opponent is a Salaman great player and they have Sunlight Wolf on the field, be a little bit wary of you summoning to the zone that your opponent's Sunlight Wolf points to because they will be able to get free card advantage from their graveyard because they can add a fire monster from your graveyard to your hand but for the rest of this turn you cannot normal summon or set or special summon monsters with the added monster's name so they're not going to get the effect of that monster that turn but it is still good card advantage for the following turn right if you used another copy of itself in order to summon it so you use a sunlight wolf to summon a sunlight wolf it gets an additional effect that is the essentially the gimmick of salamangrates is that if you use a link monster to summon a link monster of the same name in the archetype it gets a bonus effect what this one's bonus effect is and activate its effect to add a Salamangrate spell or trap from your graveyard to your hand. Particular deck, because of the ban list, the only Salamangrate spell traps we have in this deck are the Field Spell, which of course the Link 1 will search for, and Salamangrate Circle, which is a little bit of a Swiss army knife. Salamangrate Circle has the effect that you can target one of your Salamangrate Link monsters that you control that was Link summoned using a, a monster with the same name as Material, so generally speaking that's going to be the Sunlight Wolf. And then you will make it unaffected by monster effects that turn, except for itself. So if your opponent is trying to use a card effect to get rid of it, you can use a circle to protect it. But that's not the main Swiss Army Knife effect of it, alright? The main Swiss Army Knife effect of it is that we can search any of our Cell and Man Great cards, and it's a quick play spell. So of course, during our turn, right, we're going to be able to search for whatever card we need to do our combo, but during our opponent's turn, we might be able to search for whatever we need for the particular situation that we might be in. We're going to get it back for our opponent's turn by that secondary effect of Sunlight Wolf that will add it back to our hand and we can set it for the opponent's turn. Of course, since we only have one copy of Gazelle, and Gazelle is the most important one, we are usually going to be searching for it with Circle. But we also do have a couple copies of Signet Mining, which you can search for it, and we do also have a couple copies of Lady Debug, which on normal or special summon can, you can add a level 3 or lower Cybers from deck to hand, so it can be this one, this one, or this one. Generally speaking, it's going to be this one, or this one, if you already have other access to this one. Keep in mind that if you did want to use Lady Debug, you cannot use it for the summon of Sunlight Wolf. The downside for the Lady Debug is that when Salaman Great Gazelle wants to special summon itself, you want to send a Salaman Great you control to the grave for a Link Summon, generally speaking. Because Lady Debug is not herself a Salaman Great, she's not going to be able to help you trigger off the effect of the Gazelle. So that's why you should be a little bit cautious when deciding whether or not you're going to use Debug. Some people don't even have Debug in their deck, that is completely up to them. Technically speaking, as long as you have some method by, to search for the gazelle, it's all good. As a level 4, it is pretty nice for rank 4. Why do we play such few copies of all these other cards? It's because technically speaking, if you look at this deck here, we have all of the consistency cards we need. We have the gazelle, which can send any of these to the graveyard. We have the debug, which can search for half of these. We have the Cyanate Mining, which can search for any of them. We have the Circle, which can search for any of them. Because of all this consistency, we will be able to get whatever particular one we need at any given time. Because of all these consistency cards, we will be able to fill our deck with some staple cards as well. You, however, play two copies of Jack Jaguar, because if one of the copies of Jack Jaguar happens to be taken hostage by our own Steel Swarm Roach that our, hasn't been able to activate, then we will need probably we will probably need the second copy of it you know just to have access to it for that insane grave effect because i do believe jack jaguar's grave effect to summon itself is the best because it doesn't require you to lose any card advantage or field advantage with all these options here for us it can be very easy to mess up so i'm going to show you multiple different combo tutorials to show you generally what we're trying to do depending on our hand but before we get there i'm going to talk about tech options real quick so in this particular deck i do have the mst the book of moon the Malevolent Sin, the Steel Swarm Roach, the Nightmare Unicorn, and the Ningirsu World Chalice Warrior. Strictly speaking, these are not mandatory cards in your deck. But right here you'll see I've compiled a whole list of cards you can play instead of these. And generally speaking, none of them are incorrect options. The ones I've picked, I feel, fit best with my playstyle and also with the given format that we have right now. 
Nightmare Unicorn can target any card your opponent controls and shuffle it into the deck by cost of a discard. And it is a lot easier to summon than other Link 3s because it just requires two plus monsters with different names. Because of that ease of summon, versatility for removal, Nightmare Unicorn is definitely something you should consider for this deck. Ningirsu is something that is very popular in this deck and always has been since it was released in the game because it requires two plus link monsters and this deck can very easily achieve that by using one Sunlight Wolf and one Bailing. And its effect is that you can send one card your opponent controls and one card you control to the graveyard. This does not target and it doesn't destroy. You can always just send your field spell because you've already gotten your use out of it by then. There's also a Nightmare Phoenix. It is a Link 2, so it is going to be easier to summon than the Nightmare Unicorn. However, it only destroys back row. And while that is a versatile option, you know, the deck, the deck's extra deck can be a little bit tight. So if you have the room, you can definitely feel free to play this if you feel like you need more back row removal to be more, act more accessible than just cards in your main deck. I only have the Unicorn instead of it because it is more versatile, even if it is slightly harder to summon. Generally speaking, the rank 4s are going to depend on your format, um, but Malevolent Sin is the one I have right now. You get to detach a material from it as an ignition effect to target your opponent's monster face up or face down, and then banish it until the next standby phase. Of course, we aren't planning for it to get to the next standby phase. We're going to use this in order to OTK our opponent. Another option instead of that would be Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon. It requires two level 4 monsters just the same. You can detach two materials from this card, target your opponent's monster, half that monster's attack and then the attack that that monster lost this monster gains and it's a permanent attack loss and, a, and attack gain so you'll be able to go for game a lot easier with this one if your opponent's monster happens to be face up and then we have three disruptive options depending on the format so the one i have right now is steel swarm roach it requires two level four monsters just the same as the others during the player's turn, with a level 5 or higher monster would be special summoned, you can detach an Xyz material from it, negate the special summon, and if you do, destroy it. So, this summon negate is not a once per turn. So, if your opponent will special summon a level 5 or higher monster, then you will be able to negate it twice because it has two materials. I should say, however, that if that level 5 or higher monster was special summoned because of an effect, then the roach will not be able to negate it. It can only negate a special summon that is not part of an effect. The reason I have Roach in this particular format, in this particular format, two of the best decks in the game, and Fortnoid and Mech Knight, both special summon without activating. And they are all very high level as well, so Roach will be able to very easily negate those. In a given different format, maybe you would prefer to play Abyss Dweller. It also requires two level 4 monsters, and you can quick effect at any point in time, detach a material to prevent your opponent, not you, but your opponent, from activating any effects in the graveyard. Format happens to have a lot of decks in the game that are activating dangerous effects in the graveyard that you don't want them to activate. Abyss Dweller might be better for you. In this particular format, not a lot of decks are doing that. In any given format, that perhaps Roach or Dweller aren't going to be as good. Perhaps number 106 Giant Hand is going to be good. It also requires just two level fours, and during either player's turn, when a monster effect is activated on your opponent's field, you can attach two materials from this card, target one effect monster your opponent controls. While this card is face up on the field, that effects monsters are negated, also it cannot change its battle position. So this is kind of, you know, just a little bit of a monster negate. The format doesn't care as much about Abyss Dweller or as much about Roach. Generally speaking, it's pretty likely that it will at least care about Giant Hand. So keep these cards in mind when building your deck and when formats change. If you had more room in your extra deck, you could play more Xyz if you wanted. It is important to have two Sunlight Wolf and two Bailings in any given extra deck for this deck. You cannot play less of these. You could play more Sunlight Wolf, but I would not recommend playing more Bailings. I play two Link 3s because I would like to remove my opponent's board in multiple different ways depending on the situation. This one happens to be easier, but this one happens to not target, which can be very important. Yeah, let's get into the main deck staples. So I 
believe that playing at least two copies of either MST or Cosmic Cyclone, maybe one and one, maybe even three, is definitely going to be important because there are some decks in the format that would like to use Necro Valley considering that there are a decent amount of graveyard strategies in the game, and there always will be graveyard strategies in Yu-Gi-Oh! This is just how the game works. So people are going to try to take advantage of that many times using like Odd Eyes and things that don't need the graveyard. So they will play Necro Valley, and having Necro Valley played against us is pretty much a death sentence, so having at least some out to that in the main deck is definitely important. ST and Cosmic can also just make it easier for us to play through our opponent's boards in case they have any problematic back row. Technically speaking, this deck is already fairly good at playing through interruptions as it is, so if you felt like it was a given format that you didn't need to play this, you could feel 100% free to cut it out of the deck. With Moon used to be an incredibly powerful staple in Duel Links that you had to play three copies in nearly every deck but these days it is kind of format dependent thankfully though not a lot of link based decks are that good these days and book of moon happens to turn off a decent amount of interruptions that the opponent might put off a warning point is a very new card it is also very powerful the thing that book of moon is better at doing than the warning point is turning things down on your turn it will turn off their interruption so you can go through with your plays better so that is why there's book of moon now but in the in a particular format where that doesn't matter you might want to consider warning point instead needle ceiling is a very popular card in silent mangrate these days because if there are four more monsters in the field destroy all face-up monsters so if your opponent's comboing off you could activate this and your field would actually be protected because you can just banish your bailings from the grave and your salads will be fine. Kind of a similar deal with Dark Hole, except Dark Hole is a normal spell, so you're only going to be able to use it on your main phase, but there are some people who do play this in their main decks. Another interruption that can be played in this deck is Sonic Crosswipe. It allows you to tribute a Cybers type monster to target a card on the field and destroy it. All of our main deck monsters and all of our Salaman great extra deck monsters are Cybers, so that can be very helpful. It is a minus one, so do keep that in mind. DD Crow used to be very popular in this deck but it is not currently because there are not a lot of decks that feel very impacted by the dd crow but there are definitely going to be formats in the future when dd crow is important again so definitely keep this in mind for the future in chalice this one, this one is a little bit of a rarely good one but it is definitely a very good card it doesn't remove the monster and their monster can still be used as extra deck material but sometimes their effect is going to be more important than their body karma cut is a bit of an option this deck can get very good card advantage very easily. So having that discard fodder for the Karma Cut is pretty easy. However, there are going to be certain situations where your hand is not that good and you are still going to be able to get a playoff, but you won't have any cards left in hand. Ultimate Providence is a bit of a free to play option you might want to play alongside Crosswipe and Forbidden Chalice. These are all free to play options you might want to play if you are not you know, doing that well in the staple game. It's pretty versatile, but you know, it's a bit iffy considering you don't, you don't have any way of guaranteeing that you're going to have a specific kind of card in your hand. Definitely play this if you're free to play. The skill that we choose for this deck is the tie that binds, because generally speaking, after our combo is finished, we are going to have a Salamang Great Sunlight Wolf in the field and a Jack Jaguar on the field, both of which have 1800 attack. And if our opponent's field is clear, then we can use the tie that binds to make them both 2000 attack and just go for an instant lethal right there. Just having that versatility just in case we aren't popping off that hard is pretty nice, but strictly speaking there is another skill that you could play if you wanted. And that's this skill, Rise from the Valley of Flames. At the beginning of the duel, add a Salamangrid Heatlio to your extra deck, and then the following effect can only be used if your life points are 2000 or below. Select a Salamangrid Link monster you control, and add a monster with the same name to your extra deck. Then play a Salamangrid Sanctuary to your field from outside of your deck. You might remember Sanctuary, it allows you to summon a link monster, a Salamangrate link monster, using a monster of the same name as materials, using only that as materials. So if I had a Sunlight Wolf, I could just use the Sunlight Wolf by itself. If I have a Heat Leo, I can just use the Heat Leo by itself. Heat Leo is another option that you might decide to play in your deck because on summon, not once per turn by the way, target a card in your opponent's spell trap zone and shuffle it into the deck. So if your opponent is a very heavy back row player, you might be able to use Heat Leo to shuffle away all their back row, get another Sanctuary on the field, 
to summon another Heatleo on top of the Heatleo by just using the Heatleo by itself, get rid of another back row, but then, bonus, it's a secondary effect that it gains if it used Heatleo as its material, you can target a face-up monster on the field, and a monster in your graveyard, the attack of the first target becomes equal to the other targets until the end of the turn. But what you could do with the Heatleo on the field is you could target your opponent's big attack monster, or even a solid attack monster, target that one, and also target the Salman Great Bailinx in your in your graveyard to make your opponent's attack equal to your Bailinx's attack. So your opponent's attack will become 500. Very easy to go in to get for game that way. Also, if your opponent doesn't have very many monsters, or they don't have any monsters at all, you could just target your low attack monster, like your Foxy or something, then target your uh, your other copy of Helio and make your Foxy 2300 attack, and then it'll make it easier to go for games that way. These are all options for you to consider. I'm not here to tell you how to build your deck. I'm only here to tell you how to do the combos. But yeah, let's just get into the combo tutorial, shall we? Alright, so here's the first combo. Generally speaking, in this deck, there are no hard and fast combos, alright? Generally speaking, all you need is two Salaman Great monsters, or access to two Salaman Great monsters. The circle and the sign and mining in the deck, always because we want to get a particular card, and that is going to be the first thing. Our first priority every single game is getting our Salaman Great Gazelle. This is going to allow us to get everything we need all the time. The other card, we're going to summon it by whatever means necessary. Usually, can be a normal summon, could be a special summon, and we're going to turn that one monster into a Salaman Great Bailings. This is going to be the first thing we do, regardless of what monster it is, we're going to turn our first monster into a Bailings, activate its effect, and then because a Salaman Great was sent to the graveyard, we get to activate our Gazelle in the hand. Falco is activating its effect, asking us if it wanted to set our uh, quick play back to the field and we're going to say no to that because we are actually going to add it back with our link too. Gazelle is generally speaking going to send a Jack Jaguar. However, if our opponent has a face up back row, we might be able to send a Foxy and essentially get the same thing off. Also, if our hand is pretty monster heavy and we did not use a circle yet, what we could do is send a circle to add back later using the link too. But in this particular situation, we're just going to send this Alman Great Jack Jaguar. Turn our two link monsters, sorry, our two monsters into our link two. Activate the field spell. And since we have the field spell, we can turn our link two into another copy of itself to allow our Simon White Wolf to gain its secondary effect, which we're going to activate now. Then we're going to use the graveyard effect of Jack Jaguar. Returning specifically the Sunlight Wolf into our extra deck, and not anything else here, the Sunlight Wolf needs to go back into the extra deck so that we can have a follow-up play. We're going to summon the Jack Jaguar link point here, and then Wolf will activate its effect to add something from the graveyard to the hand. We're always going to add back the Gazelle here. Because on our opponent's turn, if our opponent gets rid of one of our Salaman Great cards, we could trigger the Gazelle effect again to summon itself and send another Salaman Great to the graveyard. And here we have two Book of Moons, which is great for us, but if we did not have the two Book of Moons and we just had the first two monsters, right? That being the, uh, we had the Falco and we had the Circle. We turned the Falco in the Circle into a Link 2, a Jack Jaguar, a Circle, and a Gazelle in hand. This is, go this is generally going to be what we always do every single time. As long as we have access to a gazelle and another monster, we're going to be able to set up this field. And what's so great about this field cannot generally be seen right now. What exactly am I accomplishing here? Well, what I'm accomplishing is I have the Bailings here. If our opponent wants to destroy one of our monsters, I could use my Bailings to protect it. But so what? What, what exactly am I protecting here? So we'll end our turn, see if our NPC opponent can do anything to us. So our opponent was able to set up a board here, 
if we ha if they were doing real ward things, we could have just used our Book of Moons to protect ourselves and to prevent them to doing from doing their thing. But generally speaking, everything we just did on our first turn is for the purpose of protecting ourselves from lethal damage. All we need to do is protect ourselves from lethal damage here, and we will be absolutely fine. So I'm not going to... Oh, by the way, every time a Salamangrate is involved in a battle while you control a Salamangrate Link Monster, Sanctuary is going to ask you to activate its effect. I'm not going to read that effect for you, because it is terrible. Do not activate Sanctuary. Okay, you might read it if you're a very professional player and maybe you'll figure out a situation where you can use it, but as a general rule, say no to Sanctuary every time. I'm not going to use Bailings here because I don't need to, I'll use the Bailings to protect the Sunlight Wolf. No to Sanctuary, yes to Bailings. I'll take some damage, but at the end of the day I survived here. And if possible, you can keep your Sunlight Wolf alive because it being a Link 2 is pretty relevant for Link plays. At the end of your opponent's turn, Circle is in fact a quick play, so you're going to be able to use it to get a search. And then on your next turn, add it back using the Sunlight Wolf. So we are getting a lot of card advantage from the Circle and the Sunlight Wolf. So we're going to add something to our hand. Generally speaking, we could use a Foul. If we're going to re-summon something, then we, we will chain the Foul to summon itself, get more field advantage. We could get the Foxy. We could get the Mirror. Mirror also has the effect that when it's added from, your, from anywhere to your hand, except by drawing it during your draw phase, you can special summon it for free just by revealing it. Generally speaking though, I'm usually going to get foul just because I know it's guaranteed to be a good uh, special summon. Then as the follow-up play, this is all cards that we had before. The only card we drew was the Mystical Space Typhoon. I'm going to use the Sunlight Wolf as my first play because if they happen to have any like monster effects that want to screw me over, I can just use the Circle to protect my Sunlight Wolf. And remember, I still have the Jack Jaguar in Grave, right? So I'm going to use the Jack Jaguar, shuffle back the Falco. And it is as if they didn't break any of my board at all. I'm going to summon the Foul here. Use both of them for an XC summon in this particular case. But you might notice from when I click my extra deck that I have a decent amount of options. And those amount of options is going to be freaking awesome. You get to make your own decisions with this deck. So I'm going to use the... Uh, I'm not going to use the Malevolent Sin. Yeah, I am going to use the Malevolent Sin. I'm going to use it right away, and because both of the monsters underneath it are Salamangrates, when I send one of them as material, and we're going to get rid of this one, this one will activate its effect because a Salamangrate was in fact sent to the graveyard. Even if it's an Xyz material sent to the graveyard, Gazelle will trigger. So I'm going to use the Gazelle right now, activate its effect again. Sunlight Wolf. Will I use Sunlight Wolf? No, I will not. And I will send a copy of Foxy. It doesn't matter. I'm going to turn my Gazelle into a Bailinx. And the reason I turn it into a Bailinx, by the way, I should I will act to say yes to the Sunlight Wolf. I've already used my Gazelle, so I don't feel bad about adding it back to my hand. And then I'll, the reason I go into those two is because they're both Link Monsters. I can go into my Link 3 that requires two Link Monsters. The Sunlight Wolf and the Bailings. The reason I would go into this is because the opponent's Deco Talker can protect himself from targeting effects. So I'm just going to send my Field Spell and his Deco Talker to the grave. And, you know, I can keep going from here, to be honest with you. I could even activate my circle to get something else. Crazy thing is, I don't even think I've normal summoned yet. Yeah, I have not normal summoned as of yet. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a Jack Jaguar. Normal summon Jack Jaguar. Use Foxy. At this point, I'm really just flexing. I don't need to do anything that I'm doing right now. I will destroy his back row. Because I have private binds, I control four monsters. All of my monsters are going to gain 400 attack. And I can just go in for a game. So in that last combo, generally speaking, 
what I did turn one is what we are always planning to do turn one, even if we have more monsters. If we do have more monsters, however, we do have a chance for some more follow-up plays. In this particular combo, I'm, I actually have access to more monsters than I did before, so I'll be able to take my combo further than I originally had it. But first of all, first things first, I'm always going to do the exact same thing as my very first play. So first of all, my big priority here is to get myself a copy of Sound Man Great Gazelle. I'm going to normal summon the Lady Debug. I tend to try to put the level 4 in the, in the, in the side zones. I grab myself a Foxy because I have the Mirror, I can discard the Foxy. Summon itself. And then obviously because a uh, Salamangrate was sent to the graveyard, I can activate the Gazelle. And as always, I'll still send the same monster. That would be the Jack Jaguar, my favorite one. I'm going to turn my Bailinx into a... Sorry, my... I'm going to turn my mirror into a Bailings. Bailings will search for my field spell. So far, this is all pretty much the exact same things we're doing. The main deck things are often going to be different, but the extra deck things we're doing are all basically the same play. You know, the Gazelle is always going to be doing the same thing, usually sending a copy of Jack Jaguar. We're going to turn our Bailings and our Gazelle into our Link 2, because we have the field spell, I'm going to turn the Link 2 into another copy of the Link 2. Occasionally we can do this exact same combo turn 1, of course remembering to return the Sunlight Wolf for follow-up plays. We're usually going to be able to do what we did last combo every turn 1, but if our hand is more monster heavy, we're going to be able to do this as well. Um, so you might remember last combo, we did get the Jack Jaguar, but we have an additional level 4 in the field. And if you have two level 4s in the field, you might know what that means. So we're adding back the Gazelle just like last time. Of course, turning our two level 4s, if we went first, we could turn it into a Roach to prevent our opponent from special summoning level 5 or have higher monsters. Uh, but here, we're going for an OTK play, we're going into our Malevolent Sin. going in for an OTK. So this is one of the more broken hands you can have in the deck because it contains both Circle and Cyanet Mining. Circle and Cyanet Mining are great in combination with one another because you can use Circle to, instead of searching for Gazelle, you can search for something to discard with Cyanet Mining. Because, you know, of course, you need to discard a card to activate Cyanet Mining, right? So we could use one of our Grave Effects to get benefits off of it. So I'm gonna search for a Foxy here. And then when I use my sign up mining, I'm gonna discard that Foxy because of its grave effect to finally search for my Gazelle. And the great thing about sign up mining is that if you discard a Salam Mangrate to search for your Gazelle, Gazelle will still trigger because you did just send a Salam Mangrate from the graveyard, to, sorry, to the graveyard. Of course, I'm gonna, I usually summon Gazelle in the middle and I am going to send a copy of... I'll, I'll send a copy of Falco and say no to its effect because I can just add back the circle regularly. Then of course Lady Debug, I'm going to normal summon it, might as well get that out of the way. Activate its effect. Search for a mirror and then mirror's effect. I'm going to add it right to hand. This is what's kind of nice about Debug is that it is kind of like a one card Link 2 by itself because it will add the mirror. I will turn the debug into a Bailinx. Bailinx will search for our field spell. I'll activate the field spell. If our opponent does not control a face-up spell trap right, we can still use our Foxy effect from Graveyard. And here we are discarding a copy of uh, Jack Jaguar, which is great because we are also filling our grave 
for the effect of Jack Jaguar. We're going to destroy our opponent's thing, but we can say no if the only face up back on the field is our sanctuary. We're not really trying to destroy our own, our own sanctuary, as you might imagine. So I'm going to turn my Foxy and my Bailinx into a Sunlight Wolf. Because I have the field spell, I will turn the Sunlight Wolf into another copy of Sunlight Wolf. Before doing anything, I will use the Sunlight Wolf to add back the circle, of course. I've already used it, however, I still want to add it back in case the opponent has any disruption. The opponent here is an NPC, but, you know, I'm showing you just, you know, these combos against NPCs so you can do these combos online yourself. So I'm going to use Jack Jaguar here. Like always, returning the Sunlight Wolf is pretty much always what we're trying to return. For the follow-up play, of course. Summon itself. Add back whatever we like. We've already used our Foxy, so I'm going to add back the Foxy. From here, we have some options, right? Um, we could go into the Unicorn. We could turn our uh, Jack Jaguar into a Bailinx so that we could summon Ningirsu and get rid of him that way. So, you know, and also if I had summoned my level 4 to this zone instead, I could go into a Malevolent Sin. So these are all the options you got to be thinking about. I just wanted to point out that in that particular situation, as I'm recording, I noticed that I could have just used the graveyard effect of the Falco to return one of my uh, non-level 4s to the hand, so I could still make a Unicorn and a rank 4 very easily. Uh, but you know, this is you know how versatile this deck is, that if I'm recording a video talking about what I can do in this deck, I can still find things that I could do in this deck. Zone placement is definitely a very important thing. I kind of wanted to show you an example of that. But here I'm just going to go into Unicorn by using my Sunlight Wolf and my Jack Jaguar. Unicorn is going to discard the Foxy. Adding back that Foxy is great because it allows us to have a discard farter for free. And, you know, we're not even done, technically speaking. We can use our Silent Man Great Falco right now. Add back the Mirror. And if we wanted to, we could even activate the effect of Mirror in Hand, discarding our circles. This is not going to be something you're going to do all the time, but sometimes you might just want to have the additional body on the field. Maybe you could go into more Silent Mangrave plays. But here, sometimes you just want another body on the field to get more attack on the field if you want to go for an OTK. Alright, so I tried like 30 times to get a good hand in this deck, and it kind of seems to be impossible. This deck is so incredibly consistent that even if I try to build a deck purposefully centered around bricking with part of generosity and muscular remnants, I'm still going to have <laughs> so many consistency cards. So I'm just going to pretend that I don't have any consistency cards here. So I'm just going to search for Foxy or Mir, alright? And we're going to pretend like Foxy and Mir are the only special summons that we have. So, um, for this specific case, I'm going to go for Foul, um, and I'm going to use Falco. I'm not going to use Jack Jaguar, I'm just going to use these two, alright, because Falco is the worst grave effect, and Foul is, is the least versatile of the hand effects. So I'm going to normal summon Falco, special summon Foul, and pretend like the rest of the cards in my hand don't exist. This is, uh, you know, a bad hand combo, essentially. I'm going to use a Falco to go into Bailinx. This is, you know, a trying trying to give you a little bit of a situation of what if we don't have Gazelle, right? I'm going to say no to the Falco. going to get myself a Sanctuary. Activate the Sanctuary. Go into a Link 2. And then because we have the... Uh, this, we can go into our second one, and the Sunlight Wolf is going to be able to allow us to get back our circle. And then, you know, if our hand was a little bit better, we could do a little bit more, right? If instead of Falco, we had a Jack Jaguar, we would now be able to resummon the Jack Jaguar, and it would be pretty good. We still would not have the Gazelle, right? But we would be able to still get some card advantage back by adding back one of the monsters from our graveyard. We would also be able to put back the Sunlight Wolf. Also, if we had Mir instead of Foul, we would have to discard one. Um, so perhaps we could discard another monster, 
but generally speaking, you know, this is not such a bad thing to happen if we did not have the gazelle. All right, so I just showed you what would happen if we didn't have any gazelle, but now I'll be able to show you what happens if the only thing we have is gazelle. Let's just pretend the other cards in our hand are staples that are not going to help us. So we're going to normal summon this gazelle, send our Jack Jaguar is going to be the only good one to send in this situation. Usually there are other ones that you could consider, but in this particular situation when we only have gazelle, Jaguar is the only one we can realistically send. Sorry to send. So we're going to turn it into a bailing spell, it's going to give us our field spell. Activate the field spell, of course. Jack Jaguar is going to activate. Send this back. Summon itself. Going to our Link 2 here. And use that Link 2 to go into another copy of the Link 2. So, we just so happen to have Gazelle in our opening hand, the one copy of Gazelle. If that copy just so happened to be our one of our Salamangre Great Circles, we would be able to add that circle back with a Sunlight Wolf and we would be okay. Um, but you know, we have what we have at the end of the day. Every now and then we are going to break and it is good to know what to do in those particular cases. That said though, bricking in this deck is next to impossible. It took me like 30 tries just to find any amount of bricks and I didn't find any amount of bricks at all so I just had to I had to force myself to brick with Pot of Generosity. Um, but this is not so bad, strictly speaking. We might very well survive and there is a good chance in our in our deck, not this deck but the actual deck I showed you, not the Generosity deck but the, the actual deck that we are going to top deck into something that is going to allow us to have an insane follow-up play. Because at the end of the day, we do still have the Jack Jaguar engrave, of course. And if this one survives because of the bailings, then we will be able to resummon it and then we are popping off again, especially if we draw into a good card. So yeah, we're not doing much, but we are at least doing something with a bad hand. So the video is already at about like 40 minutes or something at the moment, and I don't want to go any further, so I'm not going to include any replays in this, but if you would like, I can show a replay video. Depends on uh, what the comments say. But you know, this deck is pretty complicated, as you, as you might have seen. Everything interacts with each other in weird ways, and you might have to play around with it offline a bit, just so you can get all of the interactions in your head before you get onto ranked. There are a couple of effects I did not mention because they're not overwhelmingly relevant, but they are kind of relevant here and there. So Jack Jaguar actually does pierce. It's kind of cool because of his 1800 body, sometimes changing something to defense with the Book of Moon if they have low defense is going to be good for game. Foxy, also a normal summon, lets you excavate the top three cards of your deck, and if you do, add an excavated Salamangre card from your deck to your hand. Um, the reason that we should not rely on that effect is because it is a very random effect. We could very easily just mill the top three, and it's just going to be Book of Moon, and we can't add anything. And the downside to that is, of course, we cannot actually use that effect the same turn that we summon it from the grave, and we cannot summon it from the grave the same time we use that effect. So you kind of have to choose what you prefer. If you wanted to use that effect, you either have to be desperate or in a really, really good situation. So it can happen. It can definitely happen. I've definitely searched for it if I already had everything. Um, but yeah. If you guys have any questions or uh, you're in a tough situation, you got a weird hand that you want me to digest, dissect for you, definitely leave it in the comments and I will tell you how to play that hand, if that hand is playable at all. If you tell me Mir, 2 MST and a Book of Moon, I'm going to tell you it's a brick bro. There's nothing else you can do. Sometimes it just how it is how it is. But yeah. If you guys haven't seen my last video, which is the World Chalice Explained video, be sure to go ahead and have a look at that one. If you like this video, like the video, subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you next time.